And now, the After Action Review with Rod Rodriguez. Uh, put their stuff up for sale and be able to purchase. Um, they're able to stay within the confines of British law and uh, still do some great business. So what Alex did was he used his, his experience as a British military soldier, his, his tenacity. He made it happen. And uh, I think it's great to see these stories from other military veterans. Becoming an entrepreneur seems to be something that a lot of ver- military veterans share. It's a it's a calling that a lot of us uh, are. We hear that because we want to do something different. We want to be our own bosses. We want to create something. We want to improve uh, on a system. We want to improve on a product. We want to give the world something different, something we think that there is a, a space in the marketplace for. It's just really interesting to know that it doesn't matter which military you're in. It seems to be a universal thing. It's a, it seems to be a universal calling uh, veteran entrepreneurship. Uh, without any further ado, uh, let's get right down to the conversation with Alex Miller of Gen Kid Exchange. Uh, Alex, tell me a little bit about yourself and your business. I'm Alex Miller, uh, founder of Genkit Exchange, which is a, it's an online marketplace for personally owned military kit. And I know, obviously, probably some of your uh, or a lot of your readers are going to be Americans and the difference between kit and gear. So we would say kit for things like boots, clothing, uh, helmets, um, equipment, plate carriers, chest rigs, that sort of stuff. But you guys might prefer to use the word uh, gear. So, but so just replace kit with gear. But yeah, that's what it is. It's an online marketplace for personnel military kit. Um, who I am? I'm um, serving soldier in the British Army. I've been in since 2011, so you know, not been knocking around for too long, but not like straight out of it. Um, started Gen Kit Exchange in about September of last year. I mean, really, it was literally just an idea that I had. I didn't know that I wanted to go down the sort of route of entrepreneurship and that entrepreneurial sort of route that a lot of people just accidentally sort of come into and that's how it really happened it was pretty much an accident i was just driving home one day and i just thought you know it'd be really cool a marketplace for military kit and i was like it doesn't exist so i went back i think i went on exercise asked all the blokes about it i thought yeah their their sort of reactions were really positive um, so I went from there and found out nobody was doing that sort of specific niche marketplace. So I thought, you know what, fuck it. I'm going to see if I can set it up and do it. Um, and after a couple of months of trying to set it up, we actually kickstarted Genkit Exchange. So we managed to raise a £1,000 on Kickstarter. Not a huge amount. I know it's probably only penny to some of the Kickstarters. But what it really did was get sort of a community behind it. Mm-hmm. And that was the thing that really mattered was a community there for people backing it so the people at work friends family and it's just slowly moved out that circle so that it's not just friends and family that are just backing me now it's there's other people that are interested in using it as an actual business perspective rather than you know knowing me and just wanting to support me but the actual platform is for b2c and ctc sales so it's for businesses um business to customer and or business to consumer and consumer to consumer sales so not just like me and you, if you want to sell your hat or your boots or whatever, that mm-hmm. I can buy it off you. It's for um, suppliers, manufacturers and retailers to sell it all on there as well. So it's a really interesting uh, mix. What you've got on there is, is and what we're hoping to go for is having new kit from the retailers, manufacturers, small kit suppliers and blokes digging out the cupboards, selling nothing that's issued and, is like, you know, from, from the quartermaster store. Because obviously I'm going to go to jail, they're going to go to jail, we're all going to jail, nobody wants that. Right. <laughs> um, but yeah, so that's sort of where it sits at the minute. There's a nice mix on there at the minute. There's some really cool guys involved with it. There's a lot of collaborations going on with different companies over in the UK. Um, it was actually an old school LBT um, chess rig go up from Canada within like the first week that we used it. I think that's all on there for quite a bit to somebody in America. So it just shows that it's not just UK mm. who might want to use it. It's, it's sort of all over, but that's where it's been focused mainly is in, is in the UK. It's not... Um, myself as Gen Kit Exchange selling anything. It's a platform for others to create a profile and sell their own gear. Oh, so, okay. Okay. Yeah, so with with Black Hawk it's gonna be them selling their Black Hawk gear, but with Gen Kit Exchange we hold no stock, we hold no product, we don't we occasionally do So you're just kind of a clearing house so people can go on your on your platform and sell their kits. Yeah, the best way to describe it is Amazon but for kit sales. So people sometimes say, Oh it's like eBay but for kit but there's no auction price, it's set prices, so it's more like Amazon for kit with 
retailers and individuals mixed. So why did you go that route? Tell me about the the process for going down that route because I, I think a lot of people – uh, I, I know a lot of veterans come up with these the ideas like I'm going to sell – I'm going to create this chess rig. I'm going to sell it uh, directly to the consumer. You created a, a space for those people to sell their goods. Yeah, I think – I don't think there was anything that was sort of um, a registered decision in my brain that went, you know what? I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do this for these reasons, for X, Y, and Z. It was just an idea that had – and maybe if I had an idea of, you know, I saw a lot of people doing, I suppose when I look back at it, you know, I did see a lot of people and there's even more people doing it now. And it's brilliant to see like the small tailoring tactical communities in the UK and abroad and stuff. And there's some really awesome gear coming out now. It's fucking really innovative stuff that the the massive companies have completely missed. And it's awesome to see that. But I saw it really crowded and a marketplace can be sort of a good um a good thing to have in that market if there's sort of kit everywhere or if there's, there's different products all over the space and there was it was quite a not what's the word um quite a distributed market and it's mm-hmm. sort of everywhere so this the aim is to disrupt it in a nice way and in in a pleasant way but in a way that brings everything together and brings sort of a common ground to the whole neutrality of everything really so there was no I'm doing this for these reasons. It was just more that's the route that it ended up going down. So how long has this actually been in effect? How long have you guys been in business now? So Genkit has been up and running for since December, I want to say about the 11th. December the 11th, it's been live. Oh, wow. Um, so it took three months to get going, and it's been live for about six months. And in that time, I mean, we've had uh, about 500 signups on the site. We've had think over 60 items listed and sold on the site um you know the facebook uh, channels and the instagram channels and twitter and stuff that sort of blown up recently and um just shows that really anybody can do it is it you know as long as you, you want you want it right right so tell me a little bit about the challenges you faced uh putting this whole company together i think probably the biggest thing with having all the normal things of, you know, like who my, who's my target audience, all this, the normal business questions that I had to sort of find out almost after I'd created it because mm-hmm. I sort of missed it out. I missed out the whole business sort of side of it. And now I'm going back and revisiting that. But the definite challenge for me has been still serving whilst doing it. So there's been sort of no real respite in, in work or anything. You know, mm-hmm. we've, we've had a little bit of time off. We've restructured as a unit. So we've not been as active as, as we might might once have been in exercises and things, but it's it's running like, especially at the start near December, November, December time, when I was literally running back to my room to like do some work on Gen Kit from actual work on a naffy break and on lunch break and like not skipping a meal, but sort of skipping sort of things that I would have liked to do to, not huge sacrifices, I've still had the time to do it myself, but You're still on that time. grind. Yeah, yeah, the, the the timing was the yeah. hardest thing. It really is trying to organize this mm-hmm. with me and you has been a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> we, nightmare. We've rescheduled like three or four times already, and it's because like your yeah. schedule, my schedule, being in Kuwait. But yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's, it de- definitely is the timing, and especially sort of trying to get people in the working day, because obviously that's when I'm at work and that's when they're at work, but... Not when I'm working on Gen Kit. Like when I can work on Gen Kit, it's like lunch times and sort of maybe naffy breaks and stuff. So I'm always trying to dodge out the work, putting my put my phone in the window to try and get a signal to email someone or waiting for a call. And it's just that sort of when other people can like relax and go on lunch break or something. Yeah, like you've got to gear it up, and that's when you've got to be at your best. So that's the hard, probably definitely is the hardest thing. But getting used to it, you're definitely getting used to it. Yeah, that's one of the things that uh, that I've I've emphasized, and a lot a lot of other uh, entrepreneurial coaches have emphasized is like your business doesn't take the place of your nine to five or your regular job. It goes on top of it. So yeah. you're working your nine to five, and then you're working from seven to two, and then you got to get up and do it all over again. Yeah, definitely it you can't fit it in it fits in where it has to and you just have to say look i'm doing this I'm sorry i've got to do it mm-hmm. or you know just face the consequences sometimes and that's just sort of the price you pay for doing it while you're while you're still serving i suppose 
Yeah, and have you had any issues with um, you know, starting your doing your business and your obligations with the military? Have they said anything about like, you know, conflicts of interest or anything like that? Have you had those challenges? There's been well, I mean, whenever I mention Gen Kexian to anybody in the military, the, the the very first thing says, and I can almost bet every single time, is but selling kit online is illegal. So for me to sell my boots that I've been issued is obviously illegal. I can't do that. There's a whole branch that's dedicated to it in the UK military. It's probably the same in the US, even bigger, isn't it? Um, and that's the first thing. And then I just have to quash it there and then. I mean, I saw um, proper legal advice with this at the start. Got some really good solicitors on board. And it was just saying that th- that's not what this is for. It's definitely not for Joe Bloggs to come and sign some stuff out of the QMs and then list it on Jenkins and get rid of it. Because like I said before, we're all going to jail and I don't want to go to jail. So that's the first thing. As soon as you get rid of that, they're like, oh, shit, really? That's actually pretty cool. That's all right. And I can't thank work enough, like my unit, how like, supportive they've been of me just like even tipping my head up to like the media officer and just saying, look, I'm supposed to be a guest on either this podcast or other podcasts or you know, I'm putting my neck out there in social media lines and the media and and they're like, yeah, that's fine, absolutely fine. You can go and do it, do whatever you want. Wish all the best luck, try and help you out with it. Work, they've given me, like, don't want to say, don't want to say, like, too much time off because I don't, you know, I don't yeah. want to ruin anything by saying that. But, I mean, they've definitely given me time off where it's just been not a nuisance to them, but it's definitely helped me out. And, you know, we can't thank them enough. And there's been no, no shadow of a doubt where they've been like, oh, no, you can't be doing this at all. So I can only thank them. So it's, it's been really good to have them on board and back so, it. And I mean, a lot yeah. of them backed it on the Kickstarter as well. Sorry. No, no, no. I was going to ask, uh, is, is this a one man show or do you have other people that help you with this? Yeah. So Gen Kit Exchange is just me at the minute. Um, at the start, I did have a partner. Um, not So not at the start. So just after the start, I had a partner. And it was actually at the time that we incorporated it as a business he was involved and then he dropped out straight away with so he was only around for about two weeks um so yeah so ever since then so it was about me for two months by myself he came in for two weeks and then left straight away just because he was doing his own things mm-hmm. he had a lot of property going on in his his sort of um his sort of work so he had to leave but since then it's just been me but it doesn't feel like it because I've got so many people around me that, you know, trying to help and just want to help. And they all come in my room and just say, you know, how can I, can I help you? Can I do anything? I'm like fucking, this is awesome. And all the, the retailers and even not even retailers, just the, the people that are knocking around in the military space that are supportive. Not once have I ever had like a sour conversation with anyone. Mm-hmm. So there's always, I know there's always people looking out for me and that's how you've got to be that mutual support with people. And you know, that's how you build something greater than just yourself is having that interdependence with other people not just you being even though it is uh you know quotes one man band it mm-hmm. doesn't feel like it because you know you surround yourself with with good people and then it, it feels better so you've had a lot of support from your your family your friends your peers and even work seems to be supporting you on this yeah um like i said with the the kickstarter we raised you know it's not a phenomenal amount but a thousand pound it, it means the world to me that people were digging their pocket for something that I've thought about and to get that up and running I mean we did that in just under a month um that was brilliant and we had loads of people from work we had like my bosses sort of you know BC major levels were sort of dipping in their pocket and and you know and pledging to to the kickstarter and you know family and and friends and stuff they've can't thank them enough honestly they've they've been absolutely brilliant and I wouldn't change any of them for for anybody else that's awesome so what do you want it? Where where is uh, Gen Kit going now? I mean, what direction are you guys going? And do you want to stay kind of like where you're at in size, or do you want to scale up? So at the minute, I've sort of taken uh, a decision in my brain to not put it on ice or not put it on hold, but to focus on funding and advertising. Those two, uh, those two, they're big things in themselves. But as long as I can focus on them. Because the Gen Kit Exchange that um, that you see online, it's an MVP. It's in its most primal format, and mm-hmm. that's we've got so many features that I've I've collected along the way that people want to see. So many things we can do with it, and different avenues we can run down. But for that needs to happen, I need to go away and focus on building a little bit of a bigger following, and 
getting some funding. And for those two things to happen, I need to sacrifice a bit of cognitive thinking with the back end stuff that I've been doing for now. You know, you've only got a certain certain amount going on. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so that sort of the back end sort of work's been pushed aside, and it's still running, ticking over. It still works fine. Um, but yeah, that's what I'm focusing on, and then hopefully bringing those two together later down the line, sort of. Like, budgeted for around about christmas time and then we're going to bring um the sort of uh, mark ii version of Genki exchange out that's hopefully going to have a million new features that people can use um and enjoy even more than than the original so that's one of the challenges i think a lot of veteran uh, a lot of entrepreneurs in general have is this idea that i'm not going to launch my business or my product until it's perfect i mean it's going to it's going to yeah. have all the features in it, and it's going to be amazing, and then I'll le- release it. Uh, it sounds like you took a more ra- a more reasonable approach, and the approach, I think, that is encouraged is just put it out there and then fix yeah. it as you go along. Yeah, definitely, and I think – I can't remember. I think it's a big startup thing, but it's one of the um, – what's the saying where it goes? Um, if you're not embarrassed of your MVP, then you, you launch too soon. Yeah, you launch too soon. Yeah, if you're not embarrassed of your first MVP, then you launch too soon. <laughs> you know, when I look at Gen K Exchange now, I think, fuck, I could have done these things or this, this and this. But just, and I probably did it a little bit too quick. Like, I didn't know enough about it. I just fucking went and did it. But, you know, hey. that's what you've got to do and push it out there. And if people like it, they'll like it. If they won't, oh, they'll tell you. Bro, I yeah. have I've told people, when I tell people I have a podcast, I'm like, it's you know, it's great. Listen to the last three or four just don't go anywhere past that. And they're like, yeah, yeah. what it's do you mean? Changing. It's changing. Yeah, it's it's constantly evolving. If you listen to episode one, I'm just like, oh, yikes. You know, I bought – it was a cheap microphone I bought off of a crackhead in <laughs> Colleen, Texas. <laughs> <On the> street. <laughs> I'm not even kidding, man. Like I waited at a McDonald's to buy this thing that I got off of Craigslist from a crackhead. So uh, if that crackhead is listening – Thank you for launching the podcast. You're fantastic. Yeah, thank you. It's all um, down to him. We appreciate it. Uh, so, yeah, I, I couldn't agree with you more. I think that's that's a huge thing for entrepreneurs to hear that it doesn't have to be perfect. You just got to put something out. Uh, tell me about your – your. Uh, you mentioned advertising, and I know social media is probably going to play a huge piece in your uh, advertising campaign. Can you tell me a little bit about what your social media strategy is? Yeah, so, I mean – when I look at social media and I mean, I knew at the start it was going to be key. It was, it was going to be pivotal in, in everything that I did. Social media was going to be there. And I'll always say to people, it's free for, for the large part, apart from, you know, like all the, the, the strategic um, ad placements and everything and the ads right. that you're doing, as long as your content's like engaging, then it's free and you can do it as much as you want, whether, you know, what, what, whatever platform you want it to be on. Um, but I mean, just for strategies the thing that i found that gets the most engagement and this is quite a lot to say about um uk squaddies but is competitions man like the first competition we did at the start was a collaboration with a kit shot uh, with a kit retailer up the road um that was brilliant to to do that launching thing i did one not long ago with a a uk coffee company that was brilliant again can can you tell me a little bit of what that means what, what do you mean by competition? Tell, tell, tell me a little bit about that. So, I, I mean, as simple as Facebook giveaways on. Um, so all I do is collaborate with. Uh, I'll just use the last one for as an example. Um, I knew that we were coming up to our 2000 like mark on our Facebook page. And I said to a, a, a kit retailer that I was I was already you know friends with him. We've been talking about Gen K Exchange for a while. I said, look, are you willing to, to sponsor it? And he said, yeah, absolutely. I know what I've got exactly in this shop that would be brilliant for it. And it's an Arc'teryx old school US Delta issue um, soft shell. And our RP of when it was when it was like first up, I think it was $600 like back in the day. But now it's sort of depreciated a little bit. But that's a um, £200 to take that off the shelf. And he was like, mate, you know what? Have this. It's going to benefit me, you, and somebody's going to have it for free. So, you know, what's what's wrong with that? Um and I mean, the engagement from that one post, I can't, if, if anybody wants to find it, just type in Gen K Exchange Arc'teryx because it will definitely come up and it's still running. So you never know, you might fucking win it. Um, but I think within 36 hours, it had almost 700 comments, 500 likes, and I think almost 400 shares. 
and for a page that's just hit 2000 likes like that's a, a lot of engagement and that's a lot um but it just shows that you know people obviously want free kit and if you make any facebook page that's on about a blade of grass in a random field that's giving away a car it's gonna get loads of engagement you that's know it doesn't true. matter what that's it is. a great point <laughs> but marry that up with original engaging yeah. content and the two can work together and bounce off each other and the people that come because they see the the um the competition will stay because of you know they're interested in the kit and as long as it's relevant the the i see as long as a giveaway prize is relevant to an arcteryx you know soft shell leaf jacket is relevant to gen kit exchange mm-hmm. then there's no reason that that can't be given away with it and the people that would want that and would engage with that competition are going to be gen kit exchange primary users so the two marry hand in hand and that's a strategy that i've used a couple of times which has been phenomenal and actually been really good to get some back in and the stuff that we've had from that from just from that from people engaging with it and dropping his messages how do i list this how do i make uh, how do i create a profile it's been brilliant and it has had the secondary effect that we wanted of more signups uh more list uh, more kit being listed and more kit being bought so that's one that we used that's pretty smart i that's something that i have actually been toying with uh with this podcast is is we've talked about uh giveaways you know books or you know different products from some of the people that we bring on the show uh, that's a great idea. And I, that's, you know, social media, you're absolutely right. It, it's, it's so clutch right now for small businesses. It's, it's free. It's cheap. If you want to do, um, Facebook, uh, what do you do? The Facebook ads, it's, you can do $10 for seven days and, and get a, you know, a pretty the, decent that, response. The, the most engaging thing or strategy to use that I've ever found is that if I can target a Facebook ad, I know where all my customers are because they're all in the military and they all live on camp and garrisons Monday to Friday, shit boss. Weekends they go home, so there's no point in doing any ads or targeted posts at the weekends. But Monday to Friday, they're within a 10-mile radius of yeah. a centre spot. So, I don't know, just say random random price of £50 working with you know Facebook ad, uh, advert app is going to go a hundredfold on what it might if you type in just the UK or just one certain category. So that's the thing that I found is brilliant is alternating between different garrisons on camp um, in the UK. They've got nowhere to go. They're on Facebook. They're seeing it and it works. And it's just so targeted and concentrated. You mm-hmm. more bang for your buck with, you know, money's only limited, but if it's used in the right way, then it can be tripled, quadrupled its actual value. Who, where have you gone for inspiration uh, in terms of being an entrepreneur, motivation, inspiration, ideas? Uh, where do you go for that? Um, I know you're going to like this. So, I mean, I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk. All right. <laughs> yeah, no, I know you yeah, I know, like him. I see you um, engage with a lot of his stuff. He is he's brilliant. And some people just say, yeah, but he's just saying, you know, you could just discard him so easily or whatever. But. And I think like him a lot, so I think not. It, sometimes it doesn't quite because it's quite a lot. Of shut up and just do it, mm-hmm. and that's what I like. I just think, all oh, right, yeah. actually, I will fucking shut up and I'll just do it. Or so Gary Vaynerchuk. Sometimes I watch his videos, and that you know that will definitely get me geared up, and ready to do stuff. Another big one is uh, the Tim Ferriss show. Yeah, I Tim absolutely Ferris. love Tim Ferriss. He's brilliant. He's got a book out called Tools of Titans, um, and through that book, I realised that he does the Tim Ferriss podcast, which is basically the book but in audio format. Um, and I've got a lot out of that. I think it's over 250, almost 300 episodes on there. I got a lot of ideas and a lot I've, from that. I've literally got that book in my room right now. Yeah. In fact, that was it, passed it, on to a friend. That was passed on to me from a friend of mine who uh, I turned him on to Gary Vaynerchuk. He turned me on to Tim Ferriss. Go figure. Yeah, the two, yeah, they, they work together really well. I don't know if they work together. I think they do actually, but um, it's just I don't know. Just some of the guests that he has on that podcast are just really big hitters, um, and they just have such knowledge in the head that you just want to pry out, and yeah. just you can actually like actually absorb it and take bits away. And people like writing things down. So I don't really write things down when I'm trying to get motivated because I feel like that anything that really hits a chord with me is going to stick with me, and I'm going to remember it. Because it's obviously, you know, tugged on some sort of emotional brain thing in my head or whatever. So just trying to focus on the stuff that you take from it and actually doing it. I think mm-hmm. 
What's another one? Um, a book I've started reading is absolutely brilliant called The Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. That's a classic. I can't remember. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's brilliant. It's just like the whole... I can't even describe it. It's, it's, I can't even put it into words, but it is, it is really good. I, I, found that, I found that book, and sometimes I find uh, these really motivational people. There's times where I have to almost like stop because I start feeling bad about myself. <laughs> I'm like, I'll read that. I'm like, oh, I, I need to do that. What am I? I'm not doing that. Oh, what's going on here? But it really does. It, it pushes you to do a self audit. You know, you really do yeah. a self audit. You start thinking about your, your own personal habits. Am I doing those things? And if I'm not, why aren't I doing those things? And, and those are, those are some serious lessons you have to confront about yourself before you can really be successful in anything, I think you have to be honest with yourself. Yeah, definitely. And it's whenever I read a book or listen to some sort of new motivational stuff that really gets me going, I think, how have I lived my life without it beforehand? How did I do what I was doing before without the knowledge that was in this book or whatever? So it's always that, just trying to move forward and just finding things that could disrupt the way you're thinking and it almost feels like you stood at a brick wall and you can't go any further and someone will just lift you up turn you around put you down and there's a ladder right there and you're like oh well fuck yeah of course there is and the amount of times that's happened where i've thought i can't do anymore i can't physically do anything here to get past this obstacle and i've just someone said something to me or someone's or have you know trolled through podcasts or books or whatever and it's just gone oh it's clear and this is and sometimes it's it's not what you're doing it's you need to change the way that you think about that problem and that's often a lot of the things in the the seven uh, habit book is the the map projections if you're rocking around detroit with a map of illinois you're not going to go very far and it's you know it's having the right map for the right problem that's gone a long way i mean i've only started reading it but i'm only like 50 pages in but See, I've just remembered that and I'll probably to hopefully be able to remember that in 10 years and take that, those lessons with it. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. So tell me, uh, if you had some advice for a uh, veteran entrepreneur and one of the – really quick, I, I just want to backtrack. One of the, the, the things that, that really attracted me to doing this interview was the fact that entrepreneurship and veteran entrepreneurship – really yeah. doesn't care about what flag you, you've got on this on your shoulder or or anything. It, it's it, there's a spirit of entrepreneurship in service members. I, I, yeah. I just see it. The two the combination of veterans either serving or ex serving and that entrepreneurship and the problems that they face in that world is it, it's a killer combo. It mm -hmm. really is that they fucking the, the problems and the, the veracity that the you can attack those sort of problems and questions with just is so just some civilians just don't have it they would just constantly look for reasons to not do it whereas you know veterans have had the hardships whether it's just you know sitting sitting in a ship field in the rain it's just that knowing you know what this isn't that bad actually i can do this and that's all that matters that yeah like you say that is unilateral and ubiquitous it's it's across the board it isn't just in the UK, it's not just in the US, not in Canada. That that speaks across the board, really. It's it is everywhere, and it's nice to see that people in the UK are picking it up on it more. I mean, I spoke to one of my mates on a podcast that we did yesterday, and he was saying that he's he runs sort of a veterans network um, mm -hmm. Facebook group, and he was saying that he's seen more and more uh, veterans and servicemen picking up entrepreneurship, and it's cool to see. And I just said it is really cool to see. It's really cool, really cool to see what people have got going on. Absolutely. So tell me, uh, what would be your advice to a veteran entrepreneur or a veteran who's, who's watching this and listening to this thinking, I have this idea. I just don't know what to do next. I don't know if I should. What's your advice to that person who, who is on the cusp? I'd say, well, the, you've got to look at it as what I would do is the best advice I could give is write down the 10 worst things that could possibly happen if you did what you're thinking about. So whether it's starting your company or doing this, this or this, write down the 10 worst things that could possibly happen. And then imagine all of those things actually happen in the worst case scenario. How difficult would it be to get back to where you are right now? 
And if it's not that hard, and it usually 90% of the time, I mean, I'm regurgitating a lot of this from Tim Ferriss, but it's just so brilliant. I just want as many people to know as possible that if it is easy and 90% of the time it is going to be easy, it's not the impossible to get back to where you originally were, then fucking right, you should do it. And you shouldn't sit there and I'm not saying that anyone just sits there and does nothing, but you should definitely try and move forward. And the most important thing is, I know it's a massive cliche, it's just, but just do it. Don't sit in the development phase for too long. Move forward, polish things a little bit, get it out there. And I think an infograph that I saw when I was first back in September or something, when I was first starting out with this was it had two pictures. The top one was um, a garage and in behind the garage was obviously, well, it was closed doors. And then the next uh, picture was the garage doors opened and there was a big box and that was simplifying doing it all behind the scenes and putting it out there like you said before and then people hating it and you just feel like well i fucked up all this time and then the picture below it was making a small box in front of everybody putting it out there making a slightly bigger box and putting it out there and making a slightly bigger box and putting it out there and keep doing that and in doing that then you're going to have a product that people have feedbacked on and people love rather than your ideas because usually they're not fucking right honestly the amount of times that i've been wrong hitting yeah. the nail on the head with a completely different fucking hammer and nail um is phenomenal whereas if i should have just listened to somebody else or got more feedback from customers you know how they say got out the building and asked my customers and it would have been so much easier but yeah they're definitely things if you could if it is easy to get back to where you are now do it if it isn't and it's like impossible and it's going to completely fuck your life up, then it's probably not a good idea, is it? But, you know, blokes have got, veterans and servicemen have got some really good ideas and it will be easy to get back to that, even if it is re-enlisting. It's going you know, to be I, easy. I, I like that. I, I think that should actually become an Instagram picture with like your face or your product and then over <laughs> over it should be fucking right you should do it. <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> i think that's great you, you definitely should like what's what's the worst thing that's going to happen yeah. if it fails and you where you are now it's not the end of the world you might look like a bit of a dickhead but you've got to stick your head above yeah, yeah i mean above the French, worst man. you know worst case scenario in a lot of times is is you might lose a little money yeah and uh, okay if you do it, yeah it's not the end of the world is it it's not yeah it's not not the last thing that's going to fucking my dying breath will be i've lost a little bit of money on this but I mean, I did a podcast with that other friend who runs the, the, the Veterans Network, Soldier Civi um, group in England. And the first podcast that we did together was focusing on um, servicemen creating projects and startups and businesses while they were still in. Mm -hmm. Because you've got everything. You've got the money that you need to do it every single month. You've got the people around you to do it. You've got a place to stay over your head. You're not going to lose anything, really. And you can't almost can't fail because you're still back in the room at the end of your day you can't get fired um, yeah yeah exactly. it's gonna be really fucking hard that if somebody fires you for trying to make a business then you're well obviously doing probably doing something fucking illegal yeah probably but, you know, so it, me and him are massive uh, massive advocates of, of just doing it while you're in like i've tried to do and if it all fails it's not the end of the world i can try again um and create something for you when you have to have to leave because everyone has to leave at some point I keep telling people your nine to five is your startup money. So if you're hearing this, you're hearing yeah. it from me, yeah. you're hearing it from across the pond. It's your nine to five people. Stay working, stay strong, stay grinding, and use that money to build your empire. Yeah, exactly. Invest what you got left at the end of the month and you don't fail. Love it. All right, man. Uh, any last words? Any last parting shots? No, no. I'm all good, yeah. Thanks for having us. Thanks for listening. I hope I've not bored you too much. With nah, man, this is... English accent. <laughs> this is a great conversation, man. I was thinking, like, we should start a podcast with you and I because I think yeah, just me this, you this is great, man. I, I, I think it's really cool to hear uh, that, you know, a lot of veterans are on target. I really do. I think a lot of vets and a lot of entrepreneurs are, are listening. And they're like, they know, they know this. They know what they got to be yeah. doing. It's just yeah. fear. They it, they just need that person to go, like you just said, fucking a right, do it. Just fucking do it. Show up yeah. and do it. And yeah. I, if they get, if they hear it enough, they'll do it. Yeah, definitely. They have got so many good ideas. You're right there saying that they're on target. They are fucking on target. So many ideas. People come up to me with so many. I was thinking about doing this. I'm like, fuck, 
I should have done that. That's a great idea. And I'm like, why aren't you doing it? He's like, oh, I can't be bothered. And I'm like, but you want to be in the army for 24 years. You will be bothered to do that. So it doesn't compute with me, but it's just trying to convince it. And the more you say it to them, the more you think, oh, you know what? Actually, yeah, that is a good idea. Or I should do this. Or I should that push is, forward. With that forward. is some fantastic uh, uh, insight. I can't be bothered by that, but you'll be bothered by doing you'll, – you'll, bo- you'll be bothered working 24 years – yeah. The military, but you won't be bothered to chase that thing that you've been wanting to do. That's crazy. Absolutely, man. Alex, really? thanks thanks so much for taking time to uh, be on the show. I really appreciate it, and uh, I'm glad that we were able to finally do it. Uh, yeah. Yeah, back and forth, man, but we got it done, man. I really appreciate you uh, uh, being on the show. Thanks again, man. Awesome, man. Thanks for having us. Cheers. Take care. All right, buddy. All right, folks, that was... Alex Miller from Gen Kid Exchange. If you want to learn more about uh, Gen Kid Exchange, you can go to www.genkit.co.uk. And if you go check them out, uh, I'm sure you're going to find something there that you are interested in that you're going to want to buy. Um, now, really quick before we go any further, I just want to give a huge shout out to Eric Rodriguez, Eric Easy E Rodriguez. He is the first uh, veteran sponsored athlete from the After Action Review podcast, and he just won his first, his debut. Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, uh, uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu match. It wasn't necessarily a tournament, but he did win his match. It's a pro debut. Guys, when you're at that level, it is not easy. You're, it's, it's no gimme. For sure, not a gimme. So uh, huge congratulations to Eric Easy E Rodriguez for uh, going out there and uh, representing the After Action Review podcast and representing military veterans everywhere. Uh, and I am Rod Rodriguez, and I am Rod Rodriguez. Uh, I'm sorry, Rod Rodriguez had the AARpodcast.com, and if you are a military veteran, uh, if you own a business that has been affected by Harvey, Irma, uh, if it's going to be affected by Jose, uh, and God knows whatever the storm is on its way, I want to hear from you. If you are a military veteran, uh, and you own a company or a small business, and you're up north where all the fires are taking place, I want to hear from you too. In general, if uh, you're a veteran-owned company and you're getting fucked by Mother Nature, uh, let's talk. I'm going to have you on the show. Maybe we can find out what it is that we need to do to help you uh, rebuild or what it is that, that you're looking for. So uh, I want to hear from you. If you know somebody that would be interested in being on the podcast that's been affected by any of these natural disasters and veteran-owned company, please get them in contact with me, Rod Rodriguez, at the AARpodcast.com, or you can uh, just go to the website, drop me a line through there, drop a, a get sending me a comment, drop some comments below and uh and a way for me to reach in i will uh and i will have you on the show that does it for me folks i will see you at the next episode